Hi, I'm Lauren Lanning. I'm the president and creative director of Odd World Inhabitants, and uh, you're here with GameSpot today, looking at our new game, Odd World: Strangers' Wrath. For Odd World, it was never our intent to be the puzzle platformer game. It's just what it made sense to us in that day when we built the Abe games and when we built Munch. And then uh, we, we also saw the landscape of games changing very quickly. So action and intensity was taking a, a more of a front, you know, center stage in the gaming community. We had a lot of ideas of what we wanted to bring to that as well. And so the timing was good to say something new for Oddworld. And at the same time, we wanted to bring a twist to some genres that we, we felt uh, could use it. And so shooting was one of those aspects that we wanted to bring something new to. And that was the creation of the concept of live ammo. A lot of the most important elements, obviously, is the uh, live ammo. That's, that's key to how we wanted to approach level design for this, which was to allow people to approach it in any manner that they felt was fun, whether it be stealth or run and gun and blow a lot of stuff up. The, the ammos were largely decided on as a group, so we would talk about things that we would like to see, like, you know, um, what would be cool to mess with NPCs to move them around. It's like, okay, a chipmunk with a big mouth, you know, that's kind of funny. Um, fuzzles are sort of an odd world staple as an ammo, so what can we use those for? Okay, proximity mines, that's cool. So, you know, design ends up doing a lot of the nitty gritty work. Obviously, code makes it function. Um, but it was it was largely a group effort. You know, everyone pitched in, and Lauren had, of course, always has lots of ideas on what those should be. Um, but what was key to keeping that in check was also this concept of alive versus dead. Bounties being worth a lot more alive than dead. So, yes, you can go in and kill everybody if you feel like it, but you get a lot less money for it, and you can't buy as many upgrades, and so on. And that really relates to the center of who this character is in, in the game, and. And then also, we wanted to break the boundary between third-person action and melees and, and things like that, and speed and run and really good physics-based controls. The first to third person was also obviously a very major mechanic, not just for beating hasty retreats out of bad situations, but also covering a lot of ground. We've built some pretty big levels because uh, we wanted that feel of, of adventure and exploration. And, and uh, um, the idea that the world was alive and it's doing things when you're not around. We're also looking at it like how do we make a character that's inherently different, that does things different than other characters. The way we approached designing Stranger was basically Lauren would come to me. He had this gut feeling of what he really wanted to create. And he's like, I want you know, something imposing, something that's very like, much not like the characters we've had in the past. And he's um, like, let's take some of the elements of of animals that we that we know, like uh, like lions and gorillas, and there's like the power that we kind of that is inherently in those animals, and see them manifest into the characters. And in the previous games, we had characters that were really weak physically, but had really strong hearts and spirit. And in this game, it starts on an opposite uh, uh, side, which is we have a really strong character. He's very tough and very mysterious and very strong, but he's weak on the inside. And through this story, he, he comes to get a lot stronger in the inside. And by doing so, he, he em embraces more of who he really is. It, it takes place on a different place on Oddworld. So it's a completely new cast. I mean, the only reoccurring character is the Fuzzle. <laughs> you know, and, and they're like rats, you know. So uh, it's all fresh, and we wanted that fresh approach. It was difficult to communicate, even to some of our own crew, why this was still a very Oddworld game. And they'd say, well, it's going to be a shooter. Well, it's going to, it's like, no, it's not but you haven't played anything like it. And that, we get that it's a little hard to understand how to build this. And that's one of the challenges of building innovative games today, is even your own crew has a hard time understanding what it is that you're trying to achieve. But when it comes to the sound design and the dialogue for the, for the Oddworld games, and particularly for, for this game, we believe that a good, a well-designed sound engine should really be a real-time composer. Depending on what's happening with the, the AI of the characters in the world, it changes the soundtrack. The second I start triggering into battle or something, the music should be there as though it's a film score, and that should be happening dynamically. Also, a good sound engine should really be a real-time Foley sound design system, so that, you know, in film, Foley is when you put all the footsteps and you do all those things. And it should be spatial as well, so if you're listening to that in surround sound, you should be able to hear those footsteps coming from here. If the guy's far away, they should be... All of that should be designed in, and if you've done it really well, you should be able to just stand in an environment, close your eyes, and tell where the live ammo is running around or flying around. So we've uh, really working hard at the studio. This team has been humbling in how much energy and 
heart and soul that they put into this game. I think it really reflects itself in the play and on the screen. And we've got years into it. We've tried to keep it under wraps. It's about to reveal itself. It comes out at the end of January. We really hope you enjoy it. We think it's something really special. And hopefully you'll feel as we do about it.